Joining us right now is State Rep. Renita Shannon of Decatur. Glad to have you back on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Um, this goes to show you how the governor utilizes uh, his thug police um, knocking on the door. Seriously, that that results in an arrest. Absolutely. And you hit the nail on the head because after what we saw on January 6th with uh, Trump supporters storming and desecrating the D.C. Capitol and these people were treated nicely by police. Some of them were even helped out of the Capitol. Certainly nobody was arrested on the spot. And Representative Cannon, who was just knocking on a door, which, by the way, is a part of our job. What many people don't understand is when bills are being signed, we are invited to watch those bill signings. So what she was doing was a part of her job and state troopers treated her worse than they treated the folks in D.C. on January 6th. Has there been any response uh, from the uh, governor's office? Any at all? No, not to my knowledge. The governor has not said a word. But again, I mean, this isn't par for the course in the Capitol. Um, we have seen where Republicans have used state troopers to basically put their hands on black women legislators whenever they get the chance. If you remember in 2018, Senator Nakima Williams was arrested just for standing with her constituents who were asking after the election where Stacey Abrams ran for governor, um, constituents were in the Capitol saying count every vote because they want to make sure that every vote was counted in that election. And she was arrested. So there's no shortage of uh, state troopers being used to put their hands on black women legislators. Is the uh, response, has the governor said anything about how his troopers conducted themselves? I have not seen anything, but when you think about the fact that they are always used in a very political way, um, I don't expect the governor to say anything because I'm sure he thinks that they were correct in what they did. This, um, of course, uh, we're, this is turning to obviously a massive fight now. You now have uh, some people. Uh, calling for boycotts, uh, National Black Justice Co uh, uh, Coalition. Uh, they actually uh, call for PGA Tour players not to play in the Masters. Uh, yesterday, Black Voters Matter, they were uh, actually protesting outside at the airport there, trying to get Delta to stand up. Uh, and so, uh, and then there are others who are saying, no, first of all, folks, chill with the economic boycott. We're not there yet. Uh, your response uh, to those e calls for economic boycott of Georgia because of this passage? Well, I understand why people are calling for economic boycott, because at the end of the day, these corporations headquartered right here in Georgia cannot um, basically wrap their arms around black Georgians during Black History Month and talk about our culture and promote our culture. But when our rights are under attack, they have nothing to say. And what we have been asking them to do is nothing. It's not like they, they've not done it before. When we have had other bills um, come through the legislature that would be bad for business, their voices have been really, really loud. So why do we have to drag them to stand up over voting rights? At the end of the day, we are a significant part of their revenue. And so if they can't stand up for us, then why would we stand up economically for them? I was looking at um, a tweet from Eric Erickson, conservative Eric Erickson, who said, hey, you know what? This bill really doesn't do that much. Uh, why are folks making a big deal out of this? And I said, well, if that's the case, why the hell do it? Well, and also, I don't think that he's in any position to talk, considering that this bill is targeted at black and brown voters. So Eric would not know what this bill actually does, because none of it will likely have an effect on him. Case in point, the bill makes it so voting hours are now nine to five. Most people are at work between nine to five. In addition to the fact that we know that black people are disproportionately rec represented in the number of low income workers in this country and those without flexible schedules, which is why we were hit so hard by the COVID pandemic, because we didn't have jobs that we could just easily work from home and that were flexible. And so, so, when so, wait, hold, so hold tight one second. So for, mm -hmm. just for everybody who's listening, so for er, so voting hours, Early voting hours are only nine to five. What, what were they b were before? All voting hours, nine to five, unless you make an exception. Um, voting hours before this bill passed were generally 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We would always tell voters across the state, if you get in line by 7 p.m., you are able to vote. So wait a what minute. Are you saying on election? Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. So even on election day? On that election is day? Voting Nine ends at 5, 5 p.m.? That is correct. It, the, the standard voting hours, you start at the baseline of 9 to 5 in this bill. Yes, those are the voting hours, and you have to jump through hurdles in order to make an exception to be able to vote um, outside of those times. Absolutely. The other thing it does is it um, restricts when you can drop off your absentee ballot. So this is also very restrictive. The bill says that you can't drop off your absentee ballot unless 
uh, voting is during the early voting period unless voting is going on, which means you can't drop off your absentee ballot except between the hours of nine to five. Wait, wait. So, so if I have an absentee ballot and I'm trying to drop it off before I go to work, I can't do it until nine o'clock because that is correct. And because they're moving this and this BS about security. Mm -hmm. They're moving, they're moving the drop boxes inside, correct? That so, is correct. So whereas now, the way it is, the drop boxes are out there at any time. You could just, hey, nine o'clock at night, you could drop mm -hmm. your ballot off. They're only allowing you to drop off an absentee ballot during the same hours. But why in the hell am I gonna sit and do that? Might as well go in and vote. Absolutely. And it's even worse than that. So you're correct. You can't even drop your absentee ballot off on your way home from work. The other thing that it makes a crime is to drop off somebody else's absentee ballot. So think about this. If you have an elderly parent who has decided to vote using absentee, because a lot of times it's hard for seniors to make their way out to the polls or really anywhere. So frequently they will use their adult children to, you know, handle many of the things that just make it easier for them. So if you want to drop off your uh, elderly parents' absentee ballot, that is a crime. This bill makes it a crime to drop off somebody else's absentee ballot. Wait, 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 wait. So you okay. <laughs> and for folks listening, that if I lived in Georgia and my mom or dad voted absentee, they physically, they physically have to carry their ballot and drop it off in the ballot box. I can't. I can't get their ballot that's signed and sealed and drop it off. That is correct. They would have the choice of either dropping it off themselves in the drop box or mailing it in. And we all know that USPS is not running in the, the ways that it used to run. So it's very risky to put anything in the mail nowadays and expect it to be on time, delivered wherever you want it to go. That's correct. That's now a crime. Mm-hmm. And when you say a crime, explain that. In the bill, it's listed as a crime. And there are quite a few areas where um, it's a felony crime. Some of these things, for example, um, watching people vote is now a crime. There are several things in the bill that are a crime now. Some so, of them misdemeanor, some of them felony. So if I so if I drop so if so if I drop it off, then oh, oh you drop it off, so therefore we can prosecute you for dropping off your parents' absentee ballot? Absolutely, because it is not your absentee ballot. Yes. What else? Uh, because, see, I love all these conservatives, especially these black conservatives, who keep saying, hey, what's the big deal with a voter ID? This bill is not about voter ID. This bill was a two-page bill that then blew up to a 100-page bill, correct? That's correct. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. There are many things in this bill that are really just meant to target black and brown voters and to just make it harder to vote for anybody. This bill even goes after the judges. It says in the bill, you know how sometimes a poll might not open um, on time because maybe they're having an issue with the machines. This bill now says that judges have to use clear and convincing evidence to even be able to extend poll hours. So it's even going after the discretion of judges. We have had no problems with judges using their discretion to say that a polling location may need to be open later because of logistical issues that may have happened earlier in the, in the day. This bill now even makes judges have to jump through more hurdles to show the exact reason why they would have to, why they would allow a poll to stay open later. It reduces um, early voting times. I mean, there are so many things in this bill, in addition to what you're hearing on national media, which is um, making it a crime to give folks water and snacks um, near the polling location. Mm -hmm. So, and again, I, I, I go back to uh, Eric's tweet, uh, you know, this really doesn't do much. Um, when we talk about, but what it also does, which is quite nefarious, the state legislatures can essentially overturn a county elections board. And Republicans also are always about local control. They, this bill also restricts county election boards from making their own decisions about voting in their own counties, correct? 
Absolutely. There's a state takeover mechanism. And in addition to that, we have seen countless bills get passed this session, which hadn't even been covered by media, but we've seen countless bills to gut current board of elections in counties where um, have a history of racial uh, discrimination against black voters. We are seeing um, board be gutted to say, listen, if you're on the board of election today, you that whole board is being wiped clean and new people will be seated um, based on political appointments for these boards. So they're doing a lot of things to make sure that at the, at the end of the day, when Trump was looking for those 11, 12,000 votes, he tried to pressure the secretary of state to find him. This bill will give many avenues the next time the secretary of state gets pressured by someone to overturn an election. And I heard one of these white Republicans actually say, we're in charge of the election. We get to determine how everything goes. I didn't hear that comment, but it would not surprise me. As I've said before, what you are seeing happen across the country is that Republicans elected a committed white supremacist to the president of the United States. And when Trump failed to win re-election, they, since that point, have made it their business to go and try to invalidate all of the votes of black and brown voters because they largely turned out and powered uh, the win that we have with Joe Biden and the U.S. Senate seats. They are making it their business to target black and brown voters. That's just what it is. All right. State Representative Renita Shannon, we certainly appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Anytime. Thank you.